Hello, so time for a stream for about an hour. I uh, thought I'd put the old flak jacket on today, the British Mark I Fragmentation Vest, Northern Ireland style one. Uh, basically, it's pretty much a copy of the US flak jackets, because Britain bought a load of US flak jackets originally, and they sort of built this, which is pretty much the same thing, just with the uh, rifle pads on it. All right, everybody. Well, it looks like a notification's been sent out, at least for this one, because um, there's people joining already. I'm good, thank you. How are you? But yeah, what I think happens now with YouTube is that uh, if they only send out like one notification per day for a channel, I think in theory anyway. So what seems to happen is if I put a video on one day and then do a stream, whichever one's come first, that's the one people get a notification for. Um, whereas let's say I um, don't forget to like the stream, everybody, as well as you come on. Whereas, let's say um, I did a thing earlier saying I'll be streaming at 8pm, then people get the notification for that, but not the stream, which means less people would actually be on than if I just randomly do a stream. Um, so there you go, you can't win. But, um, yep, yeah. well, it doesn't quite work having this with the helmet, because the uh, collar gets in the way of the helmet. Um, yeah, that's a bit better there, but... Yeah, I'm good, thanks, James, you right. So yeah, did a video earlier, um, like a 20 minute long video on the DP75 Geiger counter. Uh, that was quite interesting. Um, so it's like a 20 minute review slash tutorial on it, but that won't be live until I'm going to put on this Saturday. Um, just so there's a video on Saturday, because I don't normally do videos Saturday, but quite a lot of people watched the one last Saturday. Um, and then tomorrow I want to get a video film seeing how well d different types of body armor, so I'll include this one and it block beta, uh, beta radiation. Uh, pepper spray and tasers are completely illegal in the UK, they're considered section 5 firearms, so basically only the police, prison guards, that sort of thing can have them. How does the neck protector click on for it, Chris? Because I know obviously with this, this is just the uh, flak jacket, but Obviously, yeah, the visor, is it just one that goes at the back, like with a lot of riot helmets, like it Velcros in or something? No, I know what squad is, I haven't played it, I like armour and armour 2 and all those, but I haven't played squad. But yeah, it's a pretty standard thing for us to say now, isn't it, Rich, when you get people on asking about those, because it's always the same answer. No, we just can't have them here, basically. No, I've not shot myself with a jacket on. That's not genu you know, generally a very good idea. If you want to do a ballistics test on something like this, you don't wear it. You put on a dummy or a stand, and then you shoot it. Um, because, you know, that's a good way of winning a Darwin Award when it turns out the armor you're wearing won't stop whatever you shoot it with. you saying you're going to rip one out, Chris, or I should? The thing is, the liner for this, it doesn't bother me too much. It's not a great liner by any stretch, but it's good enough that I can wear the helmet and it not piss me off kind of thing. But I suppose I could do a video on less lethal weapons, but again, the problem is in the UK, there's not really anything, so it would just be more talking about what they are. All oh, right, so you actually rip the liner out and it has a custom liner for the neck protector. No, like the PRWU masks and all those. No, I don't. I've got the shims and things like that, but I don't have the unique sort of variations of them that the rocket refuel has had. I've done a few videos on biological weapons, but I will do more. Somebody recommended a really good video, and I can't remember, sorry, whose name it was that recommended it at the moment. But it was about, you know, historical uses of biological warfare, you know, like trebucheting dead cows and that uh, into enemy fortifications. Um, so I'm going to do a video on that at some point. Don't forget to like the stream. Yeah, Prototype came up weirdly um, the other day on the stream. I can't remember what we were talking about, but I think Infamous and Prototype randomly got brought up. Um, the only fighting knife I've got is a Fairbine Sykes. But again, the problem is with the UK is if you call them fair, um, fighting knives... That probably means the government's going to get more funny about them. 
Right, this jacket, although it feels like there is a hard plate here, I don't know if there is or not, it just always feels like there is. Um, this is just ballistic nylon. Um, because basically, I'll stand up so you can see it better, old flap jackets were ballistic nylon because these came out before Kevlar was a thing in armour. So the problem with them is that the weight and bulk of them, they offer less protection than uh, Kevlar vests do. I still don't find this uncomfortable, it's quite a comfy vest, the only problem is when the neck bit, you know, gets in the way of helmets and headgear, but in terms of, um, you know, protection, for what these were at the time, they're fairly good, because, you know, your survival rates, if you had one of these on and a grenade went off or something, is much higher than if you didn't have one of these vests, and then obviously, later on, that's why America had the Pasca armour, which was protect, uh, wasn't it? personnel armor system for ground troops or something it stood for and that was um you know uh basically a vest similar to this but a bit more slimline with kevlar in and obviously the idea was that a kevlar filament you could have a vest like this that weighed a lot less was a lot less bulky um but actually did offer far better protection yeah this is the right sort of pin period for that daniel right let me just go back to the chat because i've missed a load of comments Yeah, sadly survive. Lots of stuff like that, if it gets handed in, does get destroyed. Personally, I think it should go in museums or whatever. But yeah, sadly, they do the same thing with a lot of vintage firearms if they're handed in. You know, oh, look, here's a valuable firearm. Let's crush it. Yeah, these are really cool vests. Um, the Mark II vest is cool. I might try and get one of those at some point. I'll have a look on eBay later, actually, and see if there's any on there for a not stupid price. Um, you know, what they call the improved Northern Ireland jacket. But I do like the first one i bought this years ago though when you could get them for like 40 quid funnily enough i bought this about the same time the london riots happened in 2011 so that is going back quite a while this is actually before i even had um this channel because i made this in 2012 didn't i so yeah um i've had this vest for ages um i definitely wouldn't shoot this vest because they're quite rare and like historical things there are videos of people have shot them again if if they stop a pistol round you're lucky but again they're not as good as kevlar because they're ballistic nylon Do I like Soviet officers' caps? Yeah, I've, I don't see a problem with them. Annoying, annoyingly, Chris, I would have gone and got my turtle helmet if I thought of it before the stream, but I only just shoved the helmet on as I started it. But yeah, that's in a completely different room, so I'd have to go off and get in. It'll take me a while. Uh, do you mean my profile picture? Um, Marshall, if you mean my profile picture, um, that is a British light anti-gas respirator with um, a Brody helmet on, and I'm wearing a jumper. I've not got an NBC suit on. But if you really want, I will go find my British light anti-gas respirators for you, because I've got them in the next room along, so I could get them within a minute and come back. So if you really want me to, Marshall, I will go get my light anti-gas respirator if it will make you happy. But No, lot Kevlar's made by, I think, more than one company now, but I think DuPont invented it or patented it. But um, obviously, like, the Russians make their own Kevlar. Pretty much every modern nation builds their own Kevlar stuff. Technically, I think its proper name is Aramid Fiber, isn't it? I think Kevlar is, like, the brand name of it, but it's what everybody calls it. I'm pretty sure Aramid Fiber is like the actual name of the material. If this is a political question, I like the GP5. Um, you know, I don't go into politics, but if that's that girl that went off to join ISIS, she should be shot. All right, thanks for clearing that up, Jacob. Soviet officer caps like them more or less than the other officers' caps, really. Yeah, I think it'd be really good, will not it, if everybody starts getting along a bit better, because it'll be a lot more friendly for, you know, people wanting to get into it and just make it a lot nicer overall. Right, let's see if I've missed anything. Um... Right, head size, am I? The thing is, most masks, um, I normally get mediums, and they're fine on me. 
in terms of head circumference, I think most caps I get for like a nice fitting cap is like 58, 62 centimeters sort of size. Um, but again, different masks are measured in different ways. That's the problem because some masks will measure, you know, like bits of your jaw and, you know, bits of the head. It, some of them, it might be the distance from there to there. Like if you see that Soviet poster, how Soviet masks are measured is basically from the chin to just be up behind the ear. Like, you know, if you think where a GP5 would go on your head, that's how you're measured for Soviet masks. So again, the problem is different masks are measured in different ways. And sometimes you never even find sizing guides for certain masks. Right, I'll go get that for you, Marshall. You in entertain yourselves in the comments while I'm gone and don't forget to like the stream. And I'll be back in a second. All right, here we are. All right, enjoy the rest of your shift, Mason. All right, I have to get this helmet off, obviously, to put the mask on. Um, well, I don't know of other flat jackets because, strictly speaking, the only flat jacket I've got is this one. Actually, I have got um a pascot now because Beastal sent me one. The video is not out on that yet, but the Pascot is a lot lighter than this. Um, but obviously, Pascot was Kevlar, not ballistic nylon, so they could make it smaller. In terms of um, compared to something like the ECBA, this actually weighs more than the ECBA, even with both the plates in the ECBA. Uh, that's annoying chocolate muffin. Um, I don't really know what to suggest with that because it can be a complete bitch getting straws into drinking tubes. So. I think the one in the video was this one, wasn't it? On. If I've got them in the right things. Yeah, that's the one. All right, Peach. So, yeah, light anti-gas respirator. I'll put this on. I've not got a filter uh, in this satchel with it. And uh, the old filters that came with this contain asbestos, but there are. Actually, I can put a filter on it, so I just thought of something. In my drawer back here, I've got my finished 60 millimeters. So if I can get the drawer open, which is going to be a bit difficult because of how tight everything is. One moment. Like that. No, Peach, this is the light anti-gas respirator, like the first standard model of it. And it's got the Danish stamps on it as well because Denmark bought these as surplus. This one was made in 1944, apparently. So, I don't know if the straps are undone enough for me to um, get it on. Tell you what, I'll put it on the top of my head and pull it down just because I think it will be easier to get on that way. But again, I'm going to probably cut my all my hair off tomorrow, I think. There we go. This hasn't got a voice diaphragm in it. But yeah, that's the British light anti-gas respirator that's in the um, profile picture with the Brody helmet on top. So I hope you're happy, Marshall, because people probably can't hear me speaking with this on. Well, good news, Marshall. You can generally get them pretty cheap. Now, what I'll also show you is there's the light anti-gas respirator, the second model of it, which has a voice diaphragm on, so it's a bit more practical. Well, the S10 isn't specifically an SAS mask, um, but I really do like the S10, as anybody who's probably looked at my channel for a while knows. It's not actually my favourite mask, like a lot of people think, but I do really like the S10 for the, you know, I think it probably was like the best mask of the 1980s when it comes out. Right. If you're getting one of these, I'd probably recommend this model. 
Um, because this is the second generation of them, which has oops, shit. There was a filter inside there, and I didn't realise. I'll put this one on still with it. Um, but yeah, the uh, light anti-gas, the second variation, has that little nipple bit there is the voice diaphragm. You see, like, little metal disc in it? Uh, so that's the bit that vibrates when you talk. And there's also the big exhale valve around that bit. So the Canadian C3 is basically this with an oral nasal cup in it. Um, this one doesn't have that, so it fogs up. But you can generally get these on eBay, sometimes for like 20 or 30 pounds if you're lucky. So if you're going to get one, I'd probably suggest this version. Um, you'll probably also notice that um, the face pieces on a lot of British World War II masks are very similar. Because pretty much like the Mark IV, Mark V GSR, the light anti-gas respirators, the civilian duty mask, um, you know, like the warden gas mask. They all pretty much have the same face moulds, just with like different filter and um, front bits put on them. So yeah, let me um, put this one on for you. So yeah, the advantage to having this one on is you can hopefully hear me a bit better. Because um, obviously this model has the uh, voice diaphragm so let me just try and tighten that up a bit although i hate how the straps work on these masks they definitely improved the straps a lot since then uh, so there's that one and as you can see it's fogging up already i've also caught a bit of my hair in one of those straps which is really uncomfortable there we go right so Will it fit with a helmet? Something fell off then, didn't it? I heard something fall, but I don't know what it was. Um, helmet didn't break, did it? Oh, no, it did it. That bit's come off the helmet, look. So there you go. <laughs> Mark Six helmet quality. Um, Let's have a look where it's gone, if I can see. Yeah, what ended up happening is one of the straps has pinged off. So yeah, the um, that bit's there, and that has come off of that mount there with the screw. So, just give me a second. Let's see if I can see where it's gone on the floor, because I heard it fall down, but... Where it is, I don't know. Right, there's a screw. So we're one step closer to sorting it, but I need the other bit. By which thing? I can't see that other bit at the moment. I have to look for it after the stream, I think. Which bit are you on about, cat mixer? <laughs> Two straps have broken on the stream. Thankfully, this one's repairable. It's just literally a washer and a screw. Um, I'm pretty sure Bulgaria may have been, I don't know, I'm not sure, because a lot of Eastern European countries that hadn't already been absorbed by the USSR at that point sided with Nazi Germany to try and keep their independence. Most things I get are all off eBay, to be honest, because you can find a lot of stuff on eBay. Right, so, I'm just going to have another look in case that bit is obvious anywhere, but sadly I don't think it is. But, yeah, essentially how it works with this is you've got like a little washer that goes on um, this bit and then the screw goes through that. Unless it's somehow fallen into the helmet, but I'd probably notice that. But yeah, because yeah, this screw will... Um, the problem is with the visor on this helmet, it makes a bit of the screw on quite difficult. There we go, let's put that back. Yeah, with nothing to... Um, put this through 
the screw's obviously not going to go on because that was like the little locking thing there. So I'll put this on the desk. I'll tell you what, I'll, we'll stand up in a minute and just see. And that katana is not from The Walking Dead. It was from Blades and Bows. Um, in terms of what it is, it's a Sohei katana. I think S-O-H-E-I is the name of the company that make it. And I'm pretty sure they're just like Chinese um, made katanas, but they're properly forged and everything. They're not... Oh, it's fallen in my satchel bag. Okay, that's where it's gone. Right, I can repair this helmet. So, basically, what I want to do is get this. Um, this is a fairly easy job to do, actually, these helmets. Um, so what I want to do, I'll, I'll put the webcam down so you can actually see what I'm doing. So I'll get this bit, and that's the outer bit there, isn't it, like that? There we go. So that goes into there, like that. Hold that in with my thumb, and that screw just screws in there. Hang on, use good old Swiss Army knife. And then tighten this up. It could have been this screw was just a bit loose anyway. But, um, yeah, Mark Six helmet liners aren't the best in the world, as Chris was saying earlier. There we go, scratching away the paint on the helmet. There's a GP5 above my head, but you can't see it. There we go, there's the GP5. Um, because I'm obviously doing this. So, yep, then we'll put the, uh, that back. Let's see if it goes on with the, uh, mask underneath. That'll be interesting. Right, so, that was on the bed. Right, let me get my glass off, but there's not a bed there. But yeah. So, let's try this. Tell you what, let me just adjust these straps a bit if I can before I put the mask on. The straps that I absolutely hate. That one. I'll just tighten them all ever so slightly. It's mostly this side that really needs tightening. I'm not tightening that much. Like I've just done it. Saying that. Um, all right, bear with me a moment, and then we will uh, carry on chatting about whatever. Right, let's try this now and see if it. I bet now I've probably made it too tight to pull over my head. So like I said, I'm really glad they upgraded from straps like these. Yeah, I have. So, let's loosen this one again a bit. What's that one loosened? We'll loosen this one. There we go. Let's see if I can get it back on there. Again, it'll be easier when I don't have hair. Ugh. There we go. Right, now let's try this again. See if it works this time. I'll just fully loosen these straps first. Oh, it's making a funny noise. Vibration noise. All right, let's see if this works. So I'm just going to try and actually do the strap up, because why not? No, there's enough clearance of my chin there. So now we'll pull these bits down. pretty difficult to actually do this strap up but it's at least over the mask it's not gonna really come off is it like that so there's that and, uh, yeah the filter blocks the uh, thing from going down so should we just do it without the filter for aesthetic reasons now there you go all 
Oh, it seems like there's a lot of deleted comments while I've been messing about with a helmet. But the little particulate one, it's 60 millimeter annoyingly peak. But what I could do, saying that, just put this filter back away. If I've got a 60 to 40 millimeter adapter handy, I could try that. You can't get the bloody drawer open properly anymore. Right. Let's have a look in the bag. This one doesn't have it in there. Right, this one does. So let's see if it works. It's not made to be bullet resistant, survive, but it would work as riot armor. I've not got that Scott filter on this shelf. I might have that filter in a satchel, which means I can't find it easily. Um, I've got this one, but this is quite bulky. Yeah, that would definitely be too bulky. Um, I'm just going to see if I can sort this drawer out. So I think what's happened is one of these things has moved in the way somehow. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't know where that stock filter is off the top of my head. Uh, let me just take some filters out of this door and we'll see. GSR filter might work perfectly if, um, you know, it would attach there. Or one of these Scott filters if it was 40 millimeter. Yeah, that would work. If it was the right connector size. Oops, can I find that stop filter? Probably not. So, no, unfortunately, that is a Hungarian stick grenade, yes. Yeah, a hose might work. I can't be asked to dig one out now. I'm just wondering if that would still be too bulky, wouldn't it, even with the sea freeze filter? But yeah, there you go. I tried. I'll leave that screwed in for now. Right, I'm just going to pop all that down there again. But yeah, somehow this does actually, without the filter on, does fit with this mask. To loosen it to get it off. There we go. Yeah, I do like light anti gas respirators, but the issue with them is that um, the strap system is shit on them. It's just the uh, standard, you know, World War II British elastic straps that you kind of pull and hope they come loose again without snapping. Gas mask hoses definitely would work with the right helmet. Most masks where the filter is downwards work fine with right helmets as well. Oh, it depends what people want a mask for, doesn't it, Pinoy? Because the thing is, if you want a mask for practical survival reasons, then yes, buying a very good modern NATO mask is your best option, or a very good modern industrial mask. If you want a cool old mask, like not for survival reasons, but just because you want a cool old mask, 
then you know that's completely different isn't it oh if if you're talking to jackal dan i right, see a slingshot if you're off um you're not going to get a really good mask for cheap that's the issue because the two things don't go together but let's have a think i'm trying to think if there's any modern chinese masks or anything that are sold on amazon fairly cheaply because if they are that would be the best you'd probably get for cheap but you know it's still like i said cheap and good masks don't really go together unless you're lucky enough to find a really good condition specific surplus mask or whatever for cheap that's the fmj08 i know what that mask is but um yeah i don't have one i've not got any survive if they are the same type as the hong kong riot police using all that then they'd be fine but i don't know if they're just like really cheap plastic shields that look like those that are sold as export because so I've got a British armadillo shield here, or it might even be American, the company that makes armadillo shields, but it's the ones Britain uses. Um, but yeah, armadillo shields are very good, and there's a couple of other brands of Riot Shield that are really good. But the issue is they don't sell those new um, to people like us. You know, you have to find them secondhand. Um, whereas the only way you're really going to get a new Riot Shield is buying the Chinese ones on eBay. Because what I want to get is a small circular shield, but I've not seen any police round shields on eBay ever since I've been looking for them. Like, you know, before I wanted to get a shield, I saw those for sale. Now I want one of those shields, of course. I never find a listing, but I have to keep remembering to look for it. I'd only really pay £30 for them. Right, so your budget is 45 pounds let me see what we can find you for 45 pounds shall i um hopefully for 45 i don't know if you'll necessarily get one on amazon i'll, I'll look have a look on amazon for you but um right so i'll put 40 millimeters in as well because that will at least make finding filters easier for you um There's not much coming up that aren't like half face masks. Um, let me have a look on eBay. You're probably going to have to use eBay in all honesty if you want a decent price respirator. Um, let's have a look. Respirator. Uh, I like the FMJ05. And these are available from China for like less than £30. They might be even cheaper. Um, now they're twenty four ninety nine. So if I link you to this, if the link will fit, and I'm pretty sure I'm linking you using Weapon Collector's referral link as well, so you'll get a bit of money if you buy this. That includes delivery. Um, so yeah, it's oh wait no, it's six ninety nine delivery. So it would be about thirty pounds in total, but that's still under your forty five pounds. And I like the FMJ five, but it doesn't specify the size on here. Um, I've got an F. Well, I've got the MF11. I think that's technically an MF11 as well. Oh, it says mass size M, so that's medium. So yeah, that should be fine. I think the FMJ05 MF11 is actually a really genuinely good mask for that sort of price. Which model Polish one, Adam? Because the problem is, oh, is there, oh, Stu? I'm going to definitely have a look. Let me have a look. Right, round right shield, round right shield. Um, I know there's been the Chinese ones on there for ages, but are there UK sellers with them? Because that's that's the thing I've been looking for. I don't know if you missed that bit. Uh, sadly, Stu, they're all the Chinese ones turning up. And I don't know if they get through customs or if they're any good. They're only 21 quid, though, actually, the small ones. Because that's what the reason I wanted a small one, was just so it's kind of a manageable shield. The problem of the MP5 is, Adam, although I like the MP5, you have to be lucky and get one in good condition because MP5s sadly seem to degrade quite easily. Um, so, like, I was lucky of the one I bought from B Store ages ago, and this is before he sent me stuff for free. I got one in good condition. Um, but I know, like, a lot of people have complained of MP5s that they've bought them and they've had, like, the dried out lenses and stuff like that. So as much as I do like the MP5, it does seem it's a bit of a crapshoot if you get one where everything's in good condition. And same with like the French, you know, ARF masks or whatever they're called. But, you know, as much as I like the MP5, 
it does seem that you know you're you have to almost gamble when you buy one are you going to get one where there's not something broken on it that will then need replacing if it is even a replaceable part because obviously if you're buying surplus that's the issue of surplus unless you're buying like individually listed ones or you can look at loads of pictures of it if it's a seller that's got like a hundred of a different odd masks in they're not all going to be in the same condition Oh, that's cool, Adam. Yeah, if there's somebody in the US that's got them in, free shipping, $30, yeah, an MP5 would be good for that. Because like I said, um, you know, the MP5, I think if you get one in good condition, I do like it. Oh, X-Police Round Shield, right. Okay, it might just be the thing I searched in. So I'm doing what I always complain about, X-Police Round Shield. Let's have a look. Thank you, Stu. Yeah, I am buying that now. Right, let's have a look. I bet these have been up for ages and I've just not seen them. Um, so there's ones that are just like a black one and then there's the transparent ones. I'm not, the price is going to be the same whichever I go for. So I will probably just go for the seller that's got a load in. Film prop airsoft skirmish. You so complete with battle scars. Right, I'll buy this one. I'm just going to take my glasses off so people can't say, oh, I saw your address in the reflection. But yeah, thank you. That's coming from Plymouth. Should come by this Friday. Excellent. If that comes by Tuesday when I visit Mike, we'll I'll take it down to show you, Mike. Confirm and pay. Right, thank you very much for that, Stu. Yeah, and I bought it using what should be Mike's link, so you should get some money for that. Yeah, but yeah, thanks. It's yeah. The annoying thing is if you search Riot Shield, they don't turn up those. If you do like search what, yeah, you just told me to search X Police Round Shield, they're there. It's, it's weird, isn't it? Sometimes eBay, but that's the thing that you know. Sometimes I complain to other people about where they say I can't find this gas mask you did a video on on eBay, and they're on there. But I think eBay can just be sometimes really funny with needing to put in you know exact search terms. Um, another mask. Let me see. If there are any Spassianis still on there. Oh, ooh, what have I just seen? What have I just seen? Oh, it's from the US with $30 postage. Oh, it was an Italian M59 mask and it was like 40 quid. So I was going to get it, but then it had $30 postage on it. So I won't. Um, right. Um, Spassiani mask. Let's see if any of these are listed. Another very good mask is this one. I really like this one. This is the one I bought for Mike. So, yeah, that's another very good choice. Um, the Spassiani I really like. Yep, that's the L1A1 SOR, the British version of the foul. So, yeah, fits with the aesthetic of the flak jacket as well. I've done a live stream before, I think, where I was actually going on eBay and finding masks for people. But I'll tell you what. I should live stream at some point tomorrow. So what I could do for people if they want tomorrow's live stream, it could literally, I might, I don't mind doing a stream where people ask for advice on buying masks and surplus and we trawl through eBay and try and find some things. And then we can use weapon collectors link. Um, so he, I'll, when I post them, he'll get um, money from it because that would be good for Mike. I reckon if we do that, because then that way you'll get like a couple of quid from everybody if they find something they want to go for. It's a bit like, um, Adam, the filter for that, the um, Draeger filters, isn't it? Like the Draeger M65 filters that have the weird shape. Right, my favourite gas mask, Salmon, is the Avon CT12, but it is not the best gas mask in the world. It's just one I've got a personal preference for. Um, I know Chris really likes the FM53 he's got, and that's a very modern Avon mask, so that would be very good. But a lot of the time, it's personal preference. And again, if you wanted something that offered like unparalleled levels of protection, you'd want a hazmat suit on with an air canister with a like mask on underneath, which is also connected to the air canister. Right, most unusual gas mask. The BEM 4GP is interesting because it has the um, twisty mount. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any masks that look really, really weird. 
Canadian C4 has bug eyes that are quite funny. Um, but it is actually meant to be a very good mask. But I'm kind of the mentality of gas masks and lots of things. If it looks stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Yeah, we'll do that on um, tomorrow then, Mike. I'll arrange a time with you when we can do it, because I'll um, so you can be on for it, and we'll make sure I definitely have your link. Like I've clicked it right before, so when I do things, it's always through your link. But yeah, what was I going to say? Tomorrow I've got a load of stuff to do because our boiler's broken, right? Um, in our house, so we had somebody out to look at it today, and they've gone, "It's fucking fuck, mate, big time." They didn't put it like that, but we've got to buy a new boiler. Um, so there's a load of stuff we have to clear out tomorrow, so I don't know exactly when I'm going to be free for videos. Um, but yeah, so that's like, you know, two grand, but oh well, at least our old boiler is 20 odd years old, so it's actually had a fairly good lifespan for a boiler, but apparently the inside's just completely lime scaled up now. Um, do you know what model hazmat suit it is, Jack or Dan? Right, I'll unban you, but thank you very much for the donation, that M17 guy. Do you want a Discord link? If you have a Discord account, post your ID. And let me search Rob Motos and I'll unblock it now if it's on the block list. Just bear with me a moment. Um, but if you've got a Discord, post that and you can come on the server as well because you've donated. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Right, I need to go to Creator Studio Classic because for some reason on the new Creator Studio, you can't get at the block list or it doesn't work. Um, right, bear with me a moment. Do, 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 do. I'll go back to the chat while I wait for that to do that. I've got a Discord that's for donators, gamer. All right, cool, yeah, make one, give the ID. As said at the moment, I'm unbanning anybody that wants to be unblocked because, you know, we're trying to make the whole gas mask community a nicer place. Um, so we're, you know, sorting that out, but, um, and that should hopefully go quite well. But, you know, one of the things I've done now and then is doing unblock amnesty. Where I say, like, literally, if you're on unblock, tell me what your username is. I'll sort it out for you. Because sometimes I can block people for, like, really petty, stupid reasons. Or sometimes people get blocked and I don't even know why they've been blocked. Like, their name will be on the list. And, like, I don't even remember seeing a comment from that person. Opinions on eggs. Um, they're tasty. They're fairly healthy, aren't they? You can fry them. You can boil them. Right, community settings. Now I have to wait again for it to load because YouTube. Yeah, that's all right, that M17R. I really don't know, to be honest, because the thing is, as well as me on there, there are mods, and mods can block people. Sometimes it can be quite easily done in a live stream. If somebody, it seems like they're spamming the chat, and they can be timed out a block. But what I'm trying to do now um, yeah, like I was just saying, as you said it, Mike, um, is trying to give people timeouts more on streams if they're spamming, so they hopefully learn it's not a great idea just to spam the chat. Um, and, you know, I said, I don't mind unblocking people, because the only people that really deserve to be blocked, in my opinion, are the people who are genuinely racist, being dicks to people, you know, like on here, like on purposely trying to inflame people, or the people are just, you know, being proper cunts. Um, a lot of the time, you know, somebody can make an off-colour joke, it goes over my head that they're actually joking, and that's why they get a block. block. Yeah, thanks, Mike, because I think some people do learn, don't they? Some don't. You time them out, and then they immediately go back to spamming as soon as the timeout's finished. But, right, let me control F. Rob Motos is not on the block list. You are not there. Um, so, yeah, you shouldn't be blocked at all, because you're not on the, you're not on the list. So, yeah, I've just controlled F your name, and you're not on there. So it could be YouTube has decided that you are being hidden for some reason. Again, I don't know why, because that's happened to some people. Oh, I might get one of those shock PC at some point. I've got a Chinese kind of copy of a free MR that's so just 40 millimeter, and that's fairly good for what it is. But the one that can use either the bayonets with the blanking plugs or the 40 millimeter of the blanking plug does look quite interesting. When is next stream? There'll be a stream tomorrow, but I don't know the time yet. All right, see you, Stu. Thanks very much for finding me that um, riot shield. That's really annoying, that M17 guy. I don't know why, then. Um, have you sorted your Discord out yet? Just let me know when you have. Even if you don't do it tonight, just comment on the video saying I donated the other day. Here's my Discord ID, and I'll add you that way. 
It probably will be, Jackal. I'm going to shave my hair off tomorrow evening. Um, and The Apprentice is on. So early afternoon would probably work best because hopefully you'll get all the stuff done in the morning. All right, Miracle Machine. I think I recognize the picture on that. If it's like Yugoslavian camo and a Yugoslavian gas mask. Annoyingly, I can't go to your channel um, from here. And if I open it, it's super low res, but it does look like Yugoslavian camo in, camo in the 32 by 32 resolution picture. Am I correct? Oh, cool. I was, I was right from looking at a thumbnail for ants, because it literally is like a thumbnail um, ID in the camo. But yeah, Yugo camo is quite um, distinctive, isn't it? What is this mask? You saw it and wondered. Let's have a look, Mike. I think that would be a firefighter's mask by the look of it. Uh, let's see, because I can't see a filter port on it. I think that would run with an airline, Mike, so it's like a firefighter's respirator. As in, you'd have an airline that connects to an air tank, and that's how the mask gets the airflow in. I think that's probably the thing you can see by the left strap, the airline. Although it would actually connect, you know, like probably on one of the chin bits there, I imagine. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure that's like a firefighter's mask. I, I like how they've um, put all these amazing features on it. Let's read them. Outstanding breathing valve performance. Very low breathing resistance. Breathing valve is activated from inner mask. Instantaneous response to workload changes. I don't know what the fuck that means. First Brecht activation of positive pressure. Yeah, so it is a positive pressure mask. Positive pressure is always ensured. All version with ambient air hatch for standby use. Extended duration time. Silent operational mode, Com communicate without noise interface, fit spectacles and communications devices, does it really? Flexibility for different users and purpose. Yes, but how do you put the filter on it? How does the filter go on? Because if it doesn't use filters, for most people, it's pointless, isn't it? I think they... Uh, they're GOS, I'm pretty sure, Shock PC. GOS filters still fit in NATO masks, though. But I'm pretty sure they're not normalised threads. I'm pretty sure they're just proper GOS. Because if you compare it to an uh, FP5's thread, they look a bit different. And they screwed in absolutely fine to my Soviet masks. So I think those Chinese filters are still GOS. But GOS works in NATO, but not the other way around. Because GOS threads are a bit smaller. Uh, yeah, you certainly could bodge one survive if you didn't mind, like, potentially damaging the mask. But, yeah, if you wanted to force a NATO filter onto a, um, like, GP5, for example, and then you glued gunned around the, you know, like, intake bit, that would make an airtight seal. Oh, that's a very interesting miracle machine. No, let me search it. If it's called Nautical, is it about ships or like the sea? As in, like, it sounds a bit like nautical, or is that me trying to be too clever? Nautical. Let's have a look. It's on Steam. I'll pause the video so it doesn't like the stream. A stolen enigmatic machine is your only way out. It's likely to kill you, but so will hostile planet you're escaping. Oh, so will the hostile planet. Pull levers, hack devices, and puzzle out how to pilot the nautical crawl to freedom. This is unusual atmospheric venture or die trying. Oh, so is it like a spaceship thing? That's interesting. Is this a VR game? Or, um, it's not actually VR, is it? It looks like the kind of game built for VR, but yeah, looks interesting. I don't know if it's the sort of game I play, but you know, looks interesting. I wouldn't buy them, Adam, though, if they were second-hand. Um, I've had some very, very scary experiences trawling eBay, looking uh, at some stuff only to look at some of the other items the seller is selling and then see it's pre-owned and going, my God. Hmm. 
That's interesting. So have they got somebody who's actually providing parts for it, though, Chris, or have 3M restarted it, essentially? Because it's on the 3M website again, isn't it? Because obviously Scott's been bought by 3M. The thing is, if the GSR had a proper good, you know, quality control over it, that 3M would do, because obviously 3M don't want their name to go to shit, it might be potentially quite a good mask. Um, but just, you know, obviously there's been a lot of bad experiences with the British issued ones, where it was at the period where Scott was basically dying, and they were under pressure to make the masks as cheap as possible for the bidding price the MOD wanted to pay. So there were lots and lots of, you know, faults of them. Yeah, don't spam again then, bending. I think the problem with the GSR, Pinoy, is that it's basically the M50, but bulkier. It'd be really nice if the GSR had more slimline features. The thing is with the GSR... Okay, yeah. I wouldn't mind an Avon-branded GSR. That might be quite funny. But, um, like I said, I wouldn't mind getting another GSR if I can see one for a good price, but try getting it in a different size and see if I like it more. Because I'm wondering if the reason I find it so uncomfortable is potentially because my face just doesn't quite fit it as it should. Because it's, I really hate how it feels on my chin. It literally feels like it's crushing my chin. So I don't know if I should get a bigger or a smaller size one than I've currently got. And I know the GSR has a separate inner mask size to outer mask size, doesn't it, as well? I think mine's two and two. But I don't know if a three and a two or a three and a three would work better. I also love the S10 Joaquim, if that's how I say your name. Uh, they look very cool, Kezi uh, 84s, but I don't know. Um, I don't know how practical they were in reality. I imagine they were fairly good, but like any Diac launcher or whatever, I think looks really cool. Sadly, they take up a bit too much room for me to put up in here. No, I don't have a deactivated MG42, and they'd be bloody expensive. If you did want to get a Diac MG42, though. The best thing to get if you didn't want to actually get a proper German one is either a deactivated MG3, which is obviously the post-war German ones in 7.62 NATO, but very similar. Or you can get the Yugoslavian like copy of the MG42, which are generally like really, really cheap compared to MG42s. But again, it'd be a bit bulky for here, as much as I'd love to hold a Diac MG42 on the stream. Yeah, that was one of the problems they had with Pinoy. And I guess, again... So does the GSR use reverse sizing like the S10, Chris? So size one is the biggest, like size three or whatever, or four is the smallest. Right. Yeah, I'll probably go for a size one too then if I can find one where they actually list the inner and outer mask sizes. I'd love a deactivated brain gun. Weapon collector used to have one. Yeah, but as I was saying, the problem with the GSR is the filters are quite bulky. Like, compared to the Avon M50 size filters, the GSR filters are really bulky. Um, so I think that's where a lot of the problem comes about. If they ended up making M50 size filters for the GSR, it wouldn't be an issue. Right, I've got a Polish copy of the SSH-40, and I've also got a Hungarian helmet, which is a Soviet copy, but I'm not sure which one it's a copy of. I don't think it's an SSH-60, though, because that looks like it's got a really big front ridge. Yeah, oh, thank you, that M17 guy for the donation again. Bart is going to draw one for me at some point. The next one he's going to do is the XM28. So that will be a cheek filter mask, because personally, I prefer to look at the grasshopper to the M17. But yeah, he is going to do an M17 one at some point, because I said to him, although I'm not a massive fan of cheek filter masks, they do look cool, don't they? I think he's going to do it with the NBC hood on it as well um, for the M17 when he does it. I'll, I'll send him a message and remind him about that at some point, but I should be seeing him Thursday or Friday to film some videos. It's my brain gun. Yeah, that's what I always think of Survive when somebody says about um, brain guns. It's my brain gun. The easiest way, Scoopy, would be running water through it. I know that's not going to really, really clean it, but it would get out any like shit that's kind of built up in the tube. Uh, what, the shums, do you mean, Jack or Dan? The SHMS. Um, it's not an awful price for it, but you can sometimes get them cheaper than that. Uh, 
Uh, my M72 RPK Kezi is pretty heavy, but I think that's mostly because the RPK has the really long, like, heavier barrel, um, which makes it seem really unwieldy because the front is so heavy compared to the rest of it, especially because mine's got the skeleton stock on it. But, like, you know, the underfolder. But, um, yeah, AKs, I think a lot of people talk shit about the AK when they, like, claim they're super heavy and super inaccurate when, you know, as much as, like, AR-15s, are lighter and more accurate than AKs, it's not by a massive margin. No, hoses won't get ruined by water because most masks and respirator things are designed to work in very hazardous environments with much nastier things around than water. But, you know, what you can do, put a load of water through the hose, and then as soon as you finish putting the water through it, put it on some kitchen roll or something. Oh, yeah, AK-74s, though, are pretty similar in size to the original AKMs or whatever. It's just, obviously, the caliber's different. And they've got the uh, cool muzzle brake on the AK-74s. Definitely the Bren gun over the bar. Although they were designed for different things, the Bren gun actually ends up being better at using, doing the same sort of roles as the bar. Oh, what, the F1 grenades? But, yeah, they're very cool, aren't they? Hopefully you'll get one where the mechanism still works, so you can pull it and the uh, handle flies off. Yeah, you could always put a bit of TCP or something in there. Um, you know, like you can put in the water to disinfect it. You probably could if you spent enough money to survive, but it's kind of a shame if people deact those guns rather than just selling it to the Americans. Because, you know, there are Americans, obviously, that buy proper um functional world war one machine guns and that and shoot them all right i hope that's all good did you receive one ronk gun during your x-ray mimi ronk gun absorbed dose i've probably had about two ronk guns over the last couple of days playing with my strontium you know because the, the strontium is just so fun to play with even though you know it's very dangerous <laughs> yeah. i want some uh cesium 137 now even though that would be very hard to obtain. I don't know that model. Let me search at Shock BC. The only little small dissimilar I have um, any. Um, oh, lots of people like those. Um, and you can somehow adapt them, or there is a model that can also read alpha radiation. But I don't think it can go all that high on account um, because I've seen videos where people get those to keep flipping over and over with certain radioactive sources that like a lot of other Geiger counters would give you an accurate reading on. No, I haven't bought any fireworks. I wouldn't really let them off because we've got animals like next door has animals. You know, if we set them off in our garden, it would just piss everybody off. So other people do it down our road. But, you know, I don't see the point personally. I think the AK is a bit more ergonomic than an L85. What was in like one of the Red Army Choir sings, like the Cossack song? Because I know there's obviously a lot of Russian Cossack folk songs. I'm not sure on the model. Oh, yeah, they could definitely be used for that. Because we were on about, weirdly, Sam, on Mike's stream last night, whether or not you could buy flare guns in the UK. And you could use a firework like a flare, couldn't you, if you had to send one up for like a distress sort of thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you could probably get away with firing actual firearms if you had them illegally as well, I imagine. Not that I should advise anybody to do that, but, you know, people wouldn't really notice the gunshot noises, will they? Glad you like the videos, Oliver. But, yeah. Um, oh, the M1 Garand and the MP40 are different types of gun. The M1 Garand is essentially a very early battle rifle because, you know, it was semi-auto. Um, and it shoots 30 6 which is a hell of a cartridge, more powerful than 7.62 NATO. Um, the MP40 is obviously a 9mm submachine gun. If you're fighting like close quarters urban fighting, you probably want an MP40 for pretty much everything else. You want the Garand. Yeah, you probably could, Sam. Yeah. The thing is, Mike, we've been having fireworks here for like the last two weeks on random days. So, you know, it doesn't seem to matter. And a lot of firework displays don't do it on the 5th, do they? Because they do it on the weekend 
like they'd have done it last weekend because that was closer to the fifth, you know, but for a weekend where they can get more people to go. Yeah, why don't, why don't you tell us why alone? I know, sadly, um, a couple of years ago, they had a lot of the Red Army Choir guys die, didn't they, in a plane crash? Um, around Christmas, wasn't it? Because I, I can distinctly remember that happening around the Christmas. Do you have an apple grenade? Um, the only grenades I've got is the two F1 grenades, the other one you can't see because it's behind that green one, and two... Um, stick grenades of those Hungarian types. One's there and one's on this shelf up there somewhere. Oh uh, yeah, it's behind the uh, isomel acetate. Alright, I hope you're enjoying your SS officer's hat. I wouldn't buy an SS officer's hat personally, but sure not less if, if you like having an SS hat, go for it. It's a real shame, isn't it, when stuff like that happens. Oh, that's good, Chris. Oh, I could actually, if before I forget, Chris, what I'll do for you is where I put Duke on my subscribe recommendation list on the side of my channel, I can put you on there because I don't think you're on there. And then people might go from my channel to yours. <laughs> and that's quite funny, Way Salona, actually, not. The American Mickey Mouse you won't be able to get a hold of. The British Mickey Mouse masks you can find on eBay, but they're often just called British children's masks. Um, there's a couple of colour variations. The black and blue ones are a lot rarer than the um, like blue-red one, like the one I've got. No, sadly, I don't have a PO box. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll sort that out for you, Chris. Um, rem you might have to remind me to do it later because I'll probably forget. But you can always say on Discord and I'll do it. Also, I might see if Duke wants to be invited into the Discord server, because I know he's not donated or anything, but it might just do good having him in there so he can just report to people that, yeah, there's no weird conspiracy planning stuff going on in there. I know you'd you know, know as, that as well, Chris, but I just thought that might be helpful, um, you know, just for, uh, you know, getting people to get on a bit more. I was chatting to him a bit more on that other thing about computer things and trying to work out if there was a way he could edit a video. Um, using the YouTube editor, and sadly it turns out it probably can't. But... As far as I'm aware, aren't commercial 223 rounds as much as they are the same caliber, um, slightly more underpowered than like proper military rounds? But there's also different types of 556 five, NATO rounds, isn't there, in terms of like pressure loads and what's on them? Oh, yeah, shooting fireworks at um, planes doesn't sound like a good idea. D&B Militaria, they also do the Diac grenades, and they sell some gas masks on there, but they're very overpriced. Yeah, right, I'll try and remember to say that later to him, Chris, but I, as I said, I might forget, so I might need reminding, but... Because as soon as I finish a stream, I normally think of a load of things I need to do, and then it completely leaves my mind. Like when people say, check out this film, or check out, you know, this, check out that, I always forget. I think Mike says it's the same with him. I have to Twitter him things that he needs to remember after streams, because otherwise he immediately, you know, you immediately go and do something else. It's very similar. Um, yeah, there, I've got the PDF. Yes, 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 you're right. Hang on. Yeah, the PDF2 or whatever it's called is like that. Hang on. Is mine visible? That says Rayleigh 4A1. Yes, there we go. Basically, yes, the PDF2 or whatever it was called is built like a GP7 and a PMK1. Same sort of strap system, um, same sort of rubber. It's got a creepy looking mask, isn't it, the PDF2? I think it's because it has those sort of more inside looking eye bits. You know, it looks a bit more like an optical mask. 
It's a shame they didn't do these in bigger sizes because I reckon this would work well as an optical mask. No, I don't have any dog tags at all other than those Russian ones, the Grim Reaper on up there. Hello, JBO, you're right. Yeah, sadly, it's the same straps on here. The annoying thing is, I reckon, if the PMK had had fabric straps, I reckon the first lot of it would have been pretty redeemable. But sadly, the rubber straps on them are just... Oh, speaking of funny filters, whoever the person is that's still on, have you seen the filters that come with the... Um, what's it? Here we go. The Spassiani, because this is a really cool looking old filter, even though it's a modern one. Um, again, I think because it's Italian, it's probably that same shape as the old military ones. But, you know, it's just kind of funny that these filters. Um... You know, I like that. That sort of distinctive shape. To be honest, if you took the label off of this, you could probably use this to pretty effectively you know, cosplay older masks to make them look a bit more retro. No, this is a NATO thread, but again, you could force it on a GP5 if you wanted to. Yeah, I don't know why they've shaped it like that, but again, if it works, it works, you know, nothing wrong with it. But, um... Yeah, again, Richard, that's a good idea, because if you're only using it for particle things, you might as well just use a particle filter for that. Um, and then, you know, you've got that filter for an emergency, haven't you, if you need it? Yeah, the funny thing is, JBO, there was a load of Polish people talking about how crap that armour is. But um, I think it's just, you know, where people often like to slag off their own country's equipment. Um, I mean, because with British equipment, some of it's good and some of it's bad. But... The thing is with like the Polish stuff is if you think in the 90s when they put armor like that into service, Britain certainly didn't have body armor like that in the 1990s for the army. Um, and again, the steel plates in that, they're not as good as ceramic plates in terms of what they'd stop. But, you know, it's better than having armor with no plates, I'd say. Well, if somebody was able to 3D print me one and send me one, I'd be very interested in testing those. But sadly, I don't have a 3D printer, nor know anyone who have a 3D printer. I don't know if there's any companies around the Oxford area where you can, like, say, can I pay you to 3D print this for me and dispatch it or whatever? Because if there was, I'd get them to do me one of those and I could test it. Ah, you can order them made. Do you know, um, do you know anybody that does that, Shock PC? Ceramics generally heavier than steel survive, but again, it's going to depend on the shape and weight of the plate. Um, that Polish armor, the plates are lighter than my ECBA plates, and they're bigger. But again, it, I think it really depends. It might depend on what the steel quality is, because like with steel pot helmets, some are better than others, depending on like if it's manganese steel and stuff like that. What did you do with the Ospreys, lol? Sorry, that M17 guy. I didn't see a previous comment. Uh, I'm trying to think, Wasteliner, if there's any other way you could do it. The problem is I don't really want to set a precedent of just letting lots of people on, you know, out donating, because it's not really anything personal. It's just the idea that, you know, if it's a feature for people that have donated, I don't really want to hand it out to just anybody. But we'll have a think about it. I'll, I'll see if there's any way. Because like I said, it's not that even really I'll require people to donate much. It's just more the principle of, you know, having that paywall there for kind of stopping people causing trouble and whatever. But And so it doesn't annoy the people that have donated to get on. A mix, Kezi, but mostly just microwave meals. But it depends. If somebody else is in the house is going to cook, they'll cook for multiple people. Uh, I have no idea about that at all, Nautilus. I have not looked into it. If it is YouTube people fighting, I have bloody no interest in it whatsoever. Oh, you slagged off a bit. The thing is, I can understand, you know, why some people wouldn't like it. 
And compared to some armors some armies are using now, it's not as good, right? But the fact that that armor actually physically exists, where some nations don't even issue plate carriers to regular soldiers, you know, a plate carrier you might have some gripes with is generally better than not having a plate carrier whatsoever. Um, and again, the current British Army stuff is actually quite good now, but Britain did have a dreadful period during the 90s and early 2000s of like, you know, completely inadequate armor or not enough armor. So, you know, the idea that Poland is actually using armor that's of an all right quality is good. There's an L1A1 SLR behind me, but it's deactivated suddenly. Five deactivated guns, the SLR, the Lee Enfield, the M1 Carbine, the PPSH, and the M72 RPK. Yep. That, yep, that's a good idea, Chris. Can you post? It won't let you post a link. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there a URL I can post to get people on there? But that's a good idea. I wouldn't mind just putting that in the description of every stream. Because as I said, as long as people are happy for me to join that Discord server, I wouldn't mind joining it and chatting with people. All right, I'll get the PPSH out just for you, Tyler. Hang on. All right. Because I need to do it without knocking stuff over. There you go. There's the PPSH. And yeah, this is what these are for, for the people that are wondering. It's so you can stabilize a stock into it and actually sort of aim rather than um, it slipping off. Because on some armor, you have that issue where, um, you know, it slips off. So the idea is that with that there, you can stabilize things better. Yeah. Well, the PPSH is Russian. The body armor I've got on the moment is the old British Army flak jackets. But the point is, you know, it works with pretty much any gun. Most guns have a stock. That's what these were for. So, you know, you can get the stock to kind of get secured on there. Although it does leave green resin on your hands every time you do it. Okay. Yeah, send it to me on Discord. That's interesting, Chris. Yeah, so... At the moment, there's not an easy solution, is what you're saying, to all the people that want a Discord to join. But, you know, there are online communities, you know, of because the thing is with my Discord, the server I've got, right, for patrons and donators and that, it's not meant to be, and I think there's some confusion over this, so I'll try and clear this up now. It's not some super secret gas mask club that's meant to um, rival other gas mask collecting groups. It's just generally a Discord people can have a chat on as a, you know, perk for donating. And they can chat about what like, video games, memes, you know, they can talk about surplus. And that's, I try and talk to people about that because I find that more interesting. But it's more just a place for people out of a chat. Um, so, yeah, it's not like I've got some super secret club that I'm trying to, um, you know, say, join this one rather than joining any other Discord. No, join whatever Discord you want, you know. Um, this is just one for people who donate. All right, see you, Jackal, if you're off. Well, it's the original, isn't it, Mimi? Although it wasn't the Suomi one they copied from the Russians, and then the Russians copied the Suomi to kind of and improve on it to get the PPSH, or am I remembering that wrong? Uh, I think it's an actual World War II production model. Hang on. It is 44. If that focuses. 1944, comrades. Uh, different caliber, totally different gun, Kezi. <laughs> um, they look a bit similar to the drum mag, but that's about it. They are totally different submachine guns. Cheers, Wilbur 2 guy. A lot of the problem with that comes down to if YouTube shares your videos or not, and that can be totally random. Uh, yeah, that might interest me, Chris, but yeah. Is it something like, you know, um, what is the GP5? I know this is the JBO, but I want to click this link, Mike, and see what it is. 
That's a nice kukri. Is it that particular one you're on about, Mike, or is it... Um, look at this page in the third image. Oh, I see what you mean. The uh, one with the, like, scabbard kind of thing. That's bloody nice, isn't it? It's, I wonder if Kukri House is the one where Bart got his from. But, yeah, because Bart's got a really nice Kukri that's like one of these that's, you know, like one of the um, ones that's still made in Nepal where they make them out of old spring steel from Mercedes truck things. That's interesting, Survive. Is there a video on it? Because I know they change that all the time, that sort of stuff. But again, the problem is YouTube now is trying to be super kid friendly, isn't it? And um, all like talk show content and um, what's it like? Although now they're getting funny about kids stuff again, aren't they? Like, oh, do minors appear in this video? All right, Amazon for a GP5. I don't know if you're going to get any ghost or normalized filters on Amazon. Say that there might be Chinese filters. Let me have a look. Right, I'm on Amazon.co.uk, so if you're in a different country, bear in mind this might be different. But um, let me type in 40 millimeter filter and see if there's any Chinese ones that turn up on Amazon. And again, I want ones that aren't, yeah, mask filters. So, yeah. Um, the PA2 canister should fit. Um, hang on, let me link you to this. It's like 15 quid, but hang on. Um, this is a Chinese one, so hopefully it would fit. Uh, the PPSH is 7.62 by 25 millimeter, same round the Tokarev uses. So it's actually pretty good at penetrating body armor. But that was, I think, mostly because it was quite high velocity for a pistol round. And they generally had like steel rather than copper jackets. So it would, you know, just penetrate better because it wouldn't deform as much upon hitting armor. So yeah, that M17 guy, remember if you make a Discord, send me the thing, make a comment saying, I made a Discord, this is the thing because you've donated. So obviously I'll invite you on. Um, I don't know this name cannot be insulted. Lots of countries have different gun laws, so I don't know why sometimes they're more strict in some senses and not in others. The UK gun laws basically changed after the Hungerford massacre and the Dumblane school shooting. Um, but, you know, I don't know why, for example, Canada says you can't have the at guns, but you can literally have semi-autos. I don't know why it works like that. Let me uh, Google this survive. This sounds very interesting. This is also people for success, uh, successful Korean reunification. But it's Korean spelt with a C, not the K, which is really confusing me. Yeah, so Korean, but spelt with a C, right? Okay. Um, so it's YouTube social credit score. Very interesting. Okay. Is this. Oh, so Sargon's done a video on it. Is it a CAD daily? Is that Sargon? Yeah, right. Let me, um, I'll look at that in a minute then. PPSH is perfectly fine. The PPS 43 is even better. But, you know, this did a good job stopping um, the Nazis in World War II, didn't it? So. Yeah, Lewis guns are cool. Um... The Vickers is my favourite of all the British sort of machine guns, though. So that's essentially the improved Maxim, isn't it? But there's that funny trial you can read about with the water called um, Vickers where they literally couldn't get it to malfunction and they got bored after shooting millions of rounds through it. Yeah, 
Yep. 762 by 25 millimeter, 762 by 39 millimeter, 762 by 51 millimeter. Isn't there a 762 by like 54? Is that the Soviet rifle round? 762 by 54R, is it? There is a lot of 762s, aren't there? That, yeah. It's a combination, Mimi. If you had lots of infantry, but they had no weapons, you wouldn't stop them. But again, in Stalingrad, the PPSH was very, very good at its job. That, you know, lots and lots of automatic fire. Just don't spam the chat, bend in. You don't have to, basically, just don't keep saying okay or like random things to people. Um, you know, just go with the flow of the chat, if that makes sense. Hopefully that makes sense. Oh, I've been on an hour and 20 minutes. Oh, this stream's gone fast. Right, I will be off in a minute then. Yeah, because it's the rimmed bit, isn't it? Because most modern cartridges aren't rimmed, but yeah. Um, it's like the 303, 303 British is an R round, isn't it? With the uh, like little rims. Because, yeah, most bar actions have rimmed rounds. I probably have if, I've look, I, if I look it up, not a list. The name sounds familiar, but... Hang on, the chat's moving too fast. But I will be off in a minute because I've been on longer than I said I was going to be on. Ah, it looks cool. So yeah, it was what a submachine gun that had water cooling, so it was probably very effective, but again, probably too expensive to mass produce. You know, Finland didn't actually win the Winter War, Mimi. As much as Finland did very well in it, the Soviets did end up eventually winning the Winter War. But you can still shoot guns in the UK. Um, you can. The easiest thing is if you get an SGC, um, which is a shotgun certificate, and there's also an F, uh, FAC, which is a firearm certificate. SGCs are easier to get. But there's lots of places where you can just go to a range and shoot guns. Annoyingly, there's not that many near me that interest me because most of them are like you know, 22 long rifle, um, kind of paper target shooting at 10 yards sort of clubs, not, um, there used to be one near me, sadly, that doesn't exist anymore, that was like historical rifle shooting club, you know, so Lee Enfields, most in the Gants, all that sort of stuff, you know, muskets, and that would have interested me a hell of a lot more, but sadly, when I looked into it, it's not there anymore. All right, David, unfortunately, I'm going off in a minute. But... Yeah, exactly. It's all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, where they have very strict range rules, yeah. Oh, there's a Forgotten Weapons video on that, isn't there, Cole? I'm pretty sure I've seen that ages ago. It's probably because you come on closer to 9 p.m. rather than 8 p.m. Oh, what they go, assault rifle 15. <laughs> assault rifle. Cool. I'm going to do another top 10 gas mask video at some point when I can get a hand to film it. Um, because somebody requested, could I do like a top 10 Slavic or Warsaw packed gas mask video? And because loads of people in the chat at the time were like, yeah, yeah, do it, I'll do that. So I can have things, you know, like GP5s and MC1, CM3s, all those sort of masks. Because I know a load of people would like that sort of video. So, um, yeah, I will do that video for the people who want it, but I cannot promise when I'm making it. But be a bit impractical, wouldn't it, trying to use this to, um, but yeah. I don't know about Piats, what the legality is on them. I imagine it'd be quite hard to even find the ammunition for them, to be honest. But anyway, I'll be off in a minute, so thank you everybody for, uh, joining in. Thank you for the donations, M17. As I said, get back to me at some point. I think you might have already gone off about your Discord ID and I'll add you. 
Yeah, I know the Finns had a very good kill death ratio, Mimi, in the Winter War, but the point was they eventually lost. Just like the Confederates had a much better kill death ratio in the American Civil War and they lost. You know, Finland what Finland did very well in the Winter War. And one of the reasons they did so well was why they ended up getting a much better deal at the end of it than they would have done otherwise. But, you know, the point is they did technically still lose and it wasn't completely down to the submachine gun. A lot of it was just down to how, you know, much of hard bastards they were fighting in the snow and the cold, you know. Like, so people could actually shoot them out of a car. I suppose it doesn't have a back blast, does it, the PM? Yeah, cool. I'll join you in 40 minutes time then also, Mike on Twitch. But yeah, thanks everybody. It's been a really good, enjoyable stream. Well, it, it's definitely semi-automatic, yeah. I mean, you have to reload it after eight shots, don't you, with the um, stripper clip magazine kind of thing, because you have to put the clip in that it shoots out the top when it's uh, emptied it. But it is a battle rifle in the sense that it's a full-power semi-automatic rifle. But anyway, yep, see you, everybody. It's been a good stream, and, um, yep, see you all uh, on the stream tomorrow. And uh, as said, we'll be doing a Let's Shop for Surplus stream.